Hey everyone, today I'm talking about the Global Future 2045 International Congress. You may not have heard of that, but it was recently in the news and it was recently established by 31-year-old Russian billionaire Dmitry Itzkov. And what this initiative is, is sort of a fund for various forms of research and also an annual conference to display some of the findings and some of the more interesting theories related to cybernetic immortality. Now this story got a bit of press coverage, most of it a bit sneering and a bit jeering, but you know, I don't think you can really trust most media sources when it comes to science news, so I thought I would take a look at it myself and see really what they're presenting. And this is one of the instances in which uh, the sneering media is... Well, they're kind of on the mark, partially. But let's we have to look at some of the things they're trying to do. Now, the end goal of this foundation is to provide a sort of immortality that is robotic. That is to say, it would take human consciousness and place it in the body of a robot in which we could live in essentially forever. Or until, I guess, the robot stops functioning generally something that would give our lifespans a much, much exaggerated boost. Now, why do they think they can do this? Is this just a rich guy throwing money at something he'd like to be true? Uh, I'm inclined to say that's the case. The first sort of deadline he lays out is uh, by 2020, he believes we'll have fully functioning robotic bodies that could be controlled from a distance uh, neurologically. That is, sending signals from our brain as remote controls, basically. Now that's an interesting proposition. Very recently there was this wonderful story about a woman who had a uh, synthetic arm she was controlling with her mind. She had been uh, paralyzed and it was being used to drink and it was quite wonderful and a huge step forward. Now, will we have an entirely fully functioning human body in eight years? That seems less likely. And the reason is because, well, robotics has been around for a long time. And one of the challenges of making a human body is that it's got a lot of moving parts. I mean, to do something like this, I'm using dozens of little muscles to do a very fine motion. And when we're walking, it's not simply the muscles that are activating, it's also uh, our sense of touch and our sense of balance that come into play. And really both those things are required in order to balance while walking. That's why you almost never see bipedal robots, and when you, or even quadrupedal for that matter. And uh, when you do see them, they look very awkward and sluggish. They have to be so sure of their footing it's, they don't have that sensory feedback the way we do. Metal just doesn't have any nerve endings, unfortunately. That being said, the idea of a robot body controlled remotely by the human brain, it's totally within the realm of possibility. It's just eight years is not much time for that to happen, considering how little we've, progress we've made in the last 30 or so. Now, why does he think we can do this? He cites something called the Geminoid which is a $300,000 Android, as it's called. And, um, well, I'd describe it, but maybe I'll just show you this clip instead. Now that's the Now the Geminoid is about $300,000 invented in Denmark. Denmark. Now the $300,000 Geminoid was invented in the Netherlands and gives you about a bit of upper torso movement and some facial movement, but that's about it. It's actually quite limited and uh, a whole robotic body would be 
much more difficult to put together and probably far more expensive. One of the limitations of robotic technology is that there's no tactile feedback. So when you press down on a surface, as if you were doing so with your foot, you've got your sort of a touch feedback, your sense of balance comes into play. And robots don't quite have this, or at least not as sophisticated as human beings have it. So that's one of the reasons why robotics is so far behind, and the 2020 deadline is a bit unrealistic. Now some of the other stuff Mr. Itzkov cites, uh, or I should say the Global Future 2045 project cites, are Moore's Law, that computer power will double every 18 months. Now, assuming this to be true, and you can double it, triple it, quadruple it, whatever. This doesn't negate the problem that we have no real theory of human intelligence, which is why we can't really create artificial intelligence. Now, you might be a bit shocked to hear that. Various theories of mind we have sort of give the brain all sorts of different models of how it, op how it operates, and I could go on for a while about that. The most relevant one, though, is the human mind as a computer. Now, the main difference between human mind, the human mind and a computer is that uh, a computer is an artificial device. It's a mechanical, sort of, and it's built in a way so that if you remove one bit, it all kind of falls apart and won't function properly. Now, the human brain, on the other hand, if you were to kick someone in the head, they might be a bit messed up but they'll still function. That's because the human brain is very plastic and malleable. It changes over time the way a computer can't. And you can store new things on your computer and try to treat your thoughts as software, but thoughts and thinking processes are actually a little more difficult, difficult and different. And um, I wish I could go on about that for half an hour or so, but uh, I kind of want to get through the rest of this. Uh, and mention the next bit of uh, evidence, so to speak, pushed forward by the Global Future 2045 project is uh, a prediction by Ray Kurzweil, who uh, actually had a pretty good prediction in the 80s about the internet becoming big in the mid-90s. Not a bad prediction, and he sort of is one of those people who likes to predict future technologies. And they actually misquote him. They said he would, or he had predicted by the, by 2040s or so, we'd have robotic organs throughout our body he was actually talking about nanomachines circulating through our bodies, repairing and slowing down the aging process and doing cool things like that. Uh, it's just a little different than having uh, robotic organs, but um, that doesn't escape the problem of the difficulties of creating a robotic body, which is primary functions would be to move around, basically. Uh, I don't think you, if you're going to give yourself a robot body, why would you use a liver? Why not just have it enjoy liquor without having to worry about absorbing nutrients or anything from it? So it's a bit absurd to worry, to use that bit of evidence, and um, it's sort of in fitting with this whole project. Uh, moving on to their their first phase, the robotic body would end would have a deadline of 2020, but by 2025 they would like a robotic body that the brain can sort of plug into. Now, if you remember that episode of The Simpsons, it's an older one where. Mr. Burns builds the perfect worker, and it's sort of like a, it's a Treehouse of Horror episode where it's kind of a Frankenstein's monster thing where he takes Homer's brain and puts it in the robot body. That's the basic premise, although I guess you'd want a better brain than Homer's, so uh, it would basically give the brain an immortal body. Now this is not that far-fetched. It is far-fetched for the year 2025, but the idea of cybernetic components as pretty well validated at this point, but an entire cyber, cybernetic body, a complete cyborg with a human brain, or rather an android with a human brain, that kind of makes sense. Uh, it's something that could happen way down the line, but right now, as I mentioned, we don't understand the human brain well enough, and when talking about that brainstem connection, wow, we don't understand it at all. I mean, if we did understand it, we could possibly create treatments for people suffering spinal cord injuries. Uh, sadly, that isn't the case. Hopefully, that will change over time. I certainly hope so. And uh, that's really what kind of saves the whole idea of a robot body with a human brain, is that it's conceivable that over time we could put something together like that with a greater understanding of how the science works. However, things take a bit of a turn for the third phase of the 
Global Future 2045 project in which a robotic body would download the human mind. Now, it's not so much that this is impossible. It's certainly not impossible in the least. Uh, the problem is, though, is when the human mind is downloaded, it's not really transferred from one body to the next. What it, what is hap what would happening as we currently have technology for at the moment is that a copy would be made of the human brain. Now, when you download something, you're not really taking it from one place and putting it somewhere else. You're just making a copy of something that exists somewhere else onto your own computer. If you're downloading, you know, something off the internet, and that's basically how all file transfers work. Now, if the human mind could be reduced to a file, and as I mentioned, we don't really have a good theory of intelligence to even purport the notion that that is even possible, but assuming it was, you wouldn't be transferring yourself, you would be making a copy of yourself. So to conceptualize this, think of if you had a perfect clone of yourself. It wouldn't be like that person and you, or rather, it wouldn't be like you are now that person. It would mean there is just someone else who is exactly like you. And that's the problem with these uh, robotic brains. You would create a version of yourself that is immortal, but that version would not be you. You would still be the biological machine, so to speak. And you can't really escape that, uh, which makes this third phase kind of pointless and kind of a fake immortality, at least fake for the biological versions of us. The robotic ones might disagree. Now the final phase of the project, 2045, the crazy ridiculous one I love because it suggests we will have hologram bodies. That is, you know, these light projections that are have that contain our consciousness. This is for all the reasons I described from the previous day, it's pretty ridiculous, but what's even stranger is I'm not sure where you would store consciousness in a series of photons. Photons aren't really known for storing a lot of information, and it sort of solidifies this whole project in kind of bullshit territory. Now, I'm not against the idea of becoming an android or going cyborg or whatever. It sounds kind of cool, but ultimately not seeming that likely, unfortunately. And, uh, well, I hope this funding goes towards some good research that can still be of benefit, even if the end goals are not realized. Because, well, even finding out we can't do something is sometimes worth funding. And you never know when we might get something useful out of it as well. So... Hope I wasn't too much of a downer for the people hoping to become androids. And uh, bet on the cyborg horse. That's the future. Thanks for watching.